You were listening to a Nerd Room Podcast, a member of the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network. Be sure to check out more from the Star Wars Commonwealth on the web at StarWarsCommonwealth.com and take your first steps into a larger world. Hey everyone and welcome to the Nerd Room where we talk all things comics and movies. This is episode number 61 where we're discussing the Lego Batman movie and the Avengers Infinity War teaser spot. I'm your host Tim. I'm Troy. I'm Sanjay. There it is. There it is. Yeah, you know, it just came back from Lego Batman and what an amazing film. I can't wait to talk about it. But before we begin, I just want to say welcome back, Troy. You know, we missed you last week. Yeah, it's good to be back, but you guys held it down, man. That's an awesome episode, so good stuff. I wanted you back, but Tim was pushing against it. You know, he wanted... It was creative differences. (laughs) That's what I heard. So I'm glad you can come back, you know, and uh, be kind of that uh, vote breaker because we had some ties yesterday or last week, and so it's good to... Good to have a definitive answer with Troy. That's right. I mean, the city's safe now. I was out there, you know, handling business. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. But this week, guys, we're going to discuss a lot about the Lego Batman movie and how exciting it was. We did go see it last night, Troy and I, on the IMAX theater. So I'm really excited to discuss that because it's a different take on a DC character, something that we haven't seen particularly a lot with the current universe as far as this lightheartedness. <laughs> what do you and mean? Not taking itself <laughs> too seriously. But we're going to get into all of that. But first, we're going to discuss a little bit about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Marvel itself decided to shake the nerd world to its absolute core this week by releasing a production start video for Avengers Infinity War. Effectively, a teaser for a movie that comes out in a year and a half. And this is building on the other teasers that they have released in the past, stemming all the way back to, I believe it was either their... Uh, that at the El Capi 10 Theater, where they released that first promo when they announced Avengers Infinity War Part 1 and Part 2. You can oh. still find that on YouTube and Cam versions. Cool. On, I believe it was Age of Ultron. There was the Infinite Six, I guess, teaser, where it did go through and describe a bit more about the Infinity Stones and had some background production on what was going on there. But this is the first official announcement from Marvel itself that they did start production on January 23rd. We knew from various sources, including the actors, Dave Bautista, Jeremy Renner, all these characters, they had started actual production, but it was last Friday that they decided, hey, we're going to give you this nice little video that was preceded by Robert Downey Jr. doing a Facebook Live event. I was quite intently watching this because I thought something was going to go down, and we all know what he's doing. He's got the Tony Stark chin strap shaved and all that, so you know he's filming. (laughs) He's in character. Yeah. Yeah. And so I did watch the Facebook Live event. It was pretty cool. It's the first time I've ever partaked in a Facebook Live streaming event. Nice. And had him answering a few questions coming from the audience, and then he was joined by the directors, Joe and Anthony Russo. And I said to my wife when this was being filmed, I said, the guy asking the question sounds an awful lot like Tom Holland <laughs> in his Spider-Man voice, because right. he is English, which is yeah. kind of weird to hear him talk in an English accent. Yeah. yeah. And Spider-Man, as far as I was concerned, and as far as I knew, had not been confirmed officially for Avengers Infinity War. There's actually uh. rumors opposing that, saying, no, Tom Holland isn't going to be in this film. And I was a bit disappointed by that. Yeah. But one of the questions that was asked in this Facebook Live event, and it was aptly set up, <laughs> is Spider-Man going to be in this? And Robert Downey Jr. just says, let my cameraman take that. He spins the camera around. It's Tom Holland there with all the dots on his face. Oh. Lost my mind. <laughs> that would have been enough for me on a Friday evening when it comes to Avengers Infinity War. Yes, Spider-Man is confirmed. Was there any doubt that he was going to be in this movie? I really don't think so. No, <laughs> no, he had to be in it. Yeah. But at the same time, I still felt that. I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> but I was super excited to have that. And then moments after that, at around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock our time, this teaser trail just drops almost out of nowhere. And what do you guys think? Of, like, it's I, I have a hard time explaining here or expressing <laughs> my pure thoughts on this because I watched this got the goosebumps i got the feels my wife watched it she looked at me and says i'm about ready to cry (laughs) just that swelling of emotion did you guys get the same experience from this yeah on marvel's part well played this is this is awesome man this is um this is actually what i wanted from uh last year's celebration when star wars kind of did their own like behind the scenes trailer yeah you remember back with the rogue one One, yeah exactly 
I wasn't really on board with that, but this is so much better to me. This is this is awesome. It's very like um, Blu-ray extra kind it's of footage. Yeah. It's exactly. Yeah, it's so cool. And uh, and seeing Tom Holland, just how excited he is to be on board. <laughs> it, it's really kind of like meta in a way because it's actually like spider-man joining the avengers being like amongst those heroes he's, yeah. he's grown up you know admiring these heroes and here's tom holland joining these guys <laughs> so it's cool you and i were talking uh yesterday about like what could be under the jacket cause yeah he's, Cause he's yeah up. he's very tied up there because star lord has outfit on downey was just kind of in civvy clothes and yeah. he was like right up with the jacket <laughs> in the middle of a studio so you can see on his hands there he's clearly got like the mocap suit on of some sort so yeah. they're probably going a lot more motion capture with the actual suit right probably his web yeah. slingers in that yeah but i'm interested do you think they could be going black suit that's or what something? i was wondering because oh, if you kind of cross like the um secret wars with infinity wars or infinity yeah. gauntlet and, and you got um the black suit in there like that totally makes sense and we're a cosmic route yeah. in space so yeah. there is a line of logic there as well so that'd be so cool oh. sunday man what'd you think <laughs> This was great. Um, I didn't see it. I got home from Lego Batman, and I think you had tweeted it out. And I was like, okay, I got to check this out. And I was like, wow, this is this is really cool. Like, you know, as if we weren't already hyped enough for this movie. This just keeps it in the public's mind because it's still a year away, and we still got a long way to get there in terms of we got a, a Guardian. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fifteen months, fifteen MCU movies. Yeah, whole <laughs> retrospective to cover. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in that, follow our journey to the Avengers: Infinity War right here in the same feed you're listening to. Once a month, this month we're covering. Incredible Hulk dropping That's at right. the end of February. It'll be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Uh, as I was saying, like we still got to go through Guardians, Thor, and Spider Man, but this just keeps it top of mind. Um, how much are those three movies going to tie into this movie? That remains to be seen. But now I don't think they even need to, because we've got this and we know okay, this is coming and it's still topical and it's still top of mind. So if Guardians doesn't want to include Thanos in the film, they don't have to. They don't have to shoehorn him in. No, and I think the director, James Gunn, said explicitly that he's not going to be at least a focal point or even maybe make an appearance. I wouldn't doubt if there's like a post credit scene or something with him there. So they have to start rolling this ball down the hill a bit. And the fact that we do have Star-Lord Chris Pratt confirmed here as well in this little promo video, that's something, again, that we we're speculating on. And I personally said that maybe we weren't going to see him at the start of the movie, that something's going to happen at the end of Guardians. But they do have to roll the end of Guardians into a logical place from the pickup in Avengers Infinity War. So they have to bridge that gap so that there isn't a lot of explanation going into why the Guardians are here. So it might be something very simple, but having the confirmation and having Tom Holland, Chris Pratt, and Downey all standing beside each other, that was done for a very specific reason. Yeah. Like that wasn't by accident. They don't have Thor in there. They have three characters from three different franchises. And I'm separating out Spider-Man because he's relatively new and it makes sense to have him with Downey. But they all contrast each other and sit in almost their own spheres, which is pretty cool how they set the three of them up there. Do you think that the average moviegoer, I mean, us three comic book readers, we know what Thanos is capable of. We don't have to see it on the screen. We know, like, oh, the Infinity Gauntlet, once he gets it with the Infinity Stones, like, they're screwed. Do you think that the MCU has done a good enough job presenting Thanos as, you know, as he says in the teaser, uh, you know, the biggest, the baddest villain they've ever faced? But all we've seen him do so far is just sit on a chair. (laughs) You know, Um, do you think that they should have been at least one scene? Maybe there will be, but like a scene where he just goes to a planet, destroys it, grabs an infinity stone. I mean, if you're the average moviegoer and you don't read the comics, you may not understand just how powerful of a threat Thanos presents. I think that they'll probably get down that path really early on in in Avengers Infinity War. I think because it's a somewhat two-parter, they haven't announced the second part or name, they're going to spend a lot of time focusing on Thanos because Feige recently in an interview said that Thanos is really one of the main characters in the film, which is a bit different from what you get usually in superhero films, particularly Marvel films, where the hero is the focal point in that it contrasts a bit to what we see in DC where the villain does take some of the, the spotlight there. Mm-hmm. So Thanos is also heavily featured in this promo. And again, yeah. I don't think that's an accident. We get two concept images of Thanos and Feige does spend a little bit of time explaining how much of a badass he is. So I think we're going to get that very early on here. Some of the concept are one of the images here. We do have him assembling one of the infinity stones it looks like potentially the power stone mm-hmm. into the infinity gauntlet here and we even see him outside of his armor which is a little different than yeah. we're used to even in the comic books you don't see this side of thanos very much so it looks like they're going to explore the character in a little more depth at least that's what i'm reading into 
with this other concept image of Thanos without the helmet on, without his full suit of armor. So that's a little mm. different than we're used to. Maybe that's a spoiler. That's maybe when Thanos becomes a farmer. I think yeah. they did that actually in the comics. <laughs> that. So after... <laughs> it's true. Farmer's Stan yeah, is pretty he, he, out of this world. <laughs> I think it's after Infinity War, the comic book series. He does yeah. kind of go out. Yeah, it's really weird. Whoa, he actually becomes a farmer? Yeah. Not quite, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. You have to get into it. Um, I'll take your word for it. But you know, it's actually, it's a good point you bring up, Sanjay, because now that you think about it, maybe that's one thing Marvel kind of has lacked is... is, is building up uh his presence to the general audience because most people might just think it's kind of like the the empire when we first see him in uh in star wars like what can this guy really do because we haven't seen him demonstrate anything you know Mm -hmm. but going back to what tim said about um he's gonna be a main character going on in infinity wars Mm -hmm. maybe they'll treat him kind of like loki in avengers because he's like it wasn't his point of view but like a lot of the camera was on him yeah so that'd be kind of cool to see I think it's yeah. they're going to have to do something like that. Yeah. And they've teased this character so much. They really do have to show what he's all about. Yeah. But like you said, Troy, mm-hmm. with the Emperor in Return of the Jedi, right. we got what he was all about with a few throwaway scenes. Mm-hmm. And you never have an issue building up a villain with only having a few little cues, a few little demonstrations of what he can actually do. And I think that's all it's going to take. It might be at the sacrifice of a noble corpse or something yeah. like yeah. that, right? That we're going to have to see him coming after the individual Infinity Stone. So it depends on where the Soul Stone lands and what happens at the end of Guardians. But like this right here, it, it makes me appreciate so much what they've constructed over the last 10 years. Yeah, And it makes me feel so good about the time and the investment that I've made to this franchise, not only talking about it here week on, week out, on the mm-hmm. podcast, but yeah. also the investment in the TV shows and in the movies and going back and rewatching these. And really, that's what kicked off my comic book reading, too. So I have so much appreciation that's for true. what they're doing here. And just seeing a vignette like this just gives me this swelling of emotion. Like, just the, the music in itself right? yeah. it was just spot on. Yeah, so good. That Avengers theme. Yeah. Can't go wrong with it. And one of the major things that Feige did confirm in this was the fact that the Guardians are going to meet the Avengers. We had all made this assumption looking at the casting list. Of course, this is going to happen. But having it come out of his mouth yeah. makes yeah. it all that much more real. And there's an absolutely gorgeous piece of promo art or of concept art where it has Rocket Raccoon back to back with Thor. So cool. How unbelievable is this? <laughs> that's crazy. I think that's something else you posted on Twitter that I yeah. saw. Yeah. Blown away. I, I just couldn't get over the fact that they had dropped something like this. Because Thor is another one that hasn't been chucked around very much no. in the mix of Infinity War. Coming out of Thor Ragnarok, we really don't know what's going to be happening. But there is a slight spoiler in this concept image. So spoiler yeah. alert for Thor Ragnarok potentially <laughs> here. For Infinity War, maybe. But I'm sure I'm hoping that you've all seen this. If not, pause the podcast and go watch it. Just yeah, go what watch are you it. doing? <laughs> but he is holding Yarbjorn. I think that's how you say it. I, I can never pronounce yeah, the name. Not yeah. Mjolnir, not his hammer. So this is the big axe that he carries around. At least that's what it looks like. Yeah. Oh, okay. So either Mjolnir is potentially going to get destroyed, yeah. or it's going to be like he is in the comics right now, the unworthy Thor that is no longer able to pick up the hammer. Oh, right. So it's really cool to see him here with a different type of weapon. Does he have both arms there? Uh, can't really see, eh? You can, no, I can't really see, actually. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> it's like a lop off his arm. Right. Wow. So Kind of like uh, Star Wars, where yeah, Luke just... Skywalker loses one arm. Right, right. Mannequin see? even, and goes way, way back. But how cool, right, to see Rocket and Thor together, yeah. you know, out of this world, man. And so then, cool. Would you have ever thought that, that in 2013, when the Guardians drop, just five years later, we're going to have them teaming up with the Avengers? Like, and I know we've discussed this a lot on the podcast, and we speculated, and it's always felt kind of real, but now it just feels like it's going to happen. That's what this uh, trailer did so well. It just made it so real. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you guys are both grinning. Like. Yeah, yeah, I'm, just, I'm just in awe, man. It's like Christmas yeah. Day. Yeah. I, I don't know what else to say about yeah. it other than it was just perfection. And I yeah. know we've had numerous teasers before, but this is just on another level. And this yeah. puts Marvel on another level. This is yeah. why they're the pinnacle studio right now. So yeah, seriously, they're like, doing I know well. I'm a Marvel fanboy and I go you? a little deep sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Nah. <laughs> you hate Marvel, man. Every week we have to come in here and tell you to lay off the Marvel. Tim, just let's talk about Marvel this week. Yeah. Like, but no, there's nothing you can say. These They're on a different plane. Yeah. Like they, you can't even, there's a yeah. reason why people are trying to emulate this so yeah. much yeah. in modern day cinema is that they just keep going to the next level above and beyond. And this movie is going to be that again. 
Yeah. It's yeah, it's gonna be crazy. I heard somewhere like sixty characters, sixty yeah, heroes, two sixty four characters. Well, that was another like thing that. too. Yeah. They had all the lineup of the different cards they had yeah, posted. Yeah, Scarlet like, Witch in there. Yeah, the cool yeah. symbols like this in Avengers, this in yeah. Guardians, this is with Cap. Like, like that Winter Soldier was posted. Like, really? Yeah, I yeah. didn't see Winter Soldier. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's it's so cool too. You know, throughout the trailer, just they're they're showing you constantly like they've had this as a plan. Yeah. You know, from Iron Man in two thousand eight to Civil War, breaking them down and then having them assemble again yeah. to take on Thanos. Now, yeah. This master plan yeah, yeah just, this disassembling of the yeah Avengers. yeah it's kind of yeah. like the puppet, right? yeah. puppet master you know he's pulling the strings like in and music video or in sync yeah, yeah. <laughs> ultron's a much more uh, <laughs> yeah. i don't know about that one tim we'll have to agree to disagree on this one so let me ask you this we know the russo brothers are directing the whole thing yeah part one and two right yeah and they're um, shooting it back to back yeah. okay I don't know. I heard this somewhere, confirm or deny, but uh, James Gunn, is he directing some of the Guardian scenes in this, or he's what's going on? producing, I believe, he, well, he's on as a producer for Infinity War, so okay. my guess is that he's keeping track of the Guardians. He may be involved, maybe as a second unit director in some of the Guardian stuff, but I think he is just trying to protect a bit of the Guardians, trying to make sure that they're in the place for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 that he is happy with. Oh, okay. Um, and maintaining that characterization of Drax, of Star-Lord and all that. And I think really just keeping them on the straight and narrow. That would be my guess, is that you become overprotective of these right. properties, I would yeah. think. And he's really crafted out himself a very nice part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And yeah. keeping that and constructing something more, I think, is key to him. Like, Because he's going to have to bounce off the back end of Avengers Infinity War and spin out Volume 3 out of this giant mess that this is probably going to create within the universe itself. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see where they go from here because they've been building up to this point for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's a conversation for another day. I just don't know because every movie, the stakes get higher. Yeah. And I just don't see how they can get any higher than they are right now unless they bring in X-Men. Yeah, if they can get their hands on Doctor Doom, that'd yeah. be sweet. Galactus. Galactus, or, uh, yeah. I've, been, I've been watching for a while, uh, Kang the Conqueror, who's oh. uh, played a big role right now in... Um, Avengers comics and even Old Man Logan. So Ooh. Kang the Conqueror is where I'd like to see yeah. it go. Yeah. But if anyone can shift this universe from this massive Infinity War arc into something different, I have full faith <laughs> that it's Kevin Feige yeah. and the crew there yeah. right now. So yeah. wait and see what's coming after. But we are counting down towards that. We got a year and a half, year and a half. How many days, Tim? You probably know. How many days? It's less than 500. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Like it was 500 in the end of the end of December there. Oh, okay. Closing off here, not to go any further, but. You know, you did mention 60 plus characters. Could we see the Netflix characters pop up? Daredevil, oh. Defenders, any of those. I mean, after watching this trailer, did you think, man, maybe those guys are somewhere on the screen, on set? I still don't think Not so. going to happen, eh? I, yeah. I would love it. Um, and I'm revisiting a bit of Luke Cage right now, cool. actually, before going into Iron Fist. Right. And the thing, what they're doing in the Netflix is they don't really reference much beyond Avengers 1. I know it's That's New York centric, right. but they're always mentioning that. There's no mention of the Sokovia Accords, or actually there might be a small one, but there's nothing of the Civil War, anything like that going on, the bigger universe. There's lots of nods and hints to the Avengers themselves, but it's almost like they're stuck just post-Avengers. Yeah. And that might have to do with the timeline too as well. That's true. So where they actually fit in, where they've integrated that. So they might be in a much more stinted timeline and maybe not as much real time as the movies, jumping a year or two ahead. Right. So I don't really know what they're, but I might... Big part of me feels like that would be awesome. Yeah. Just to pan down and just see them fighting whatever Thanos' army is. Right. I just don't think it's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cosmic for those characters because they're very grounded. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I don't see how Daredevil can go up against Thanos. No, <laughs> the but power think about the just... army, like a Chitauri-type yeah, exactly. army. Well, there's like got to be something like cannon that. Cannon fodder. Like, yeah, these guys, like when you look at Rocket and um, Thor here, they're not fighting Thanos one-on-one here. They're yeah. fighting some sort of cannon fodder army would be my guess i know that gets old in these type of team up movies that you do have this throwaway army but you need you need these action sequences yeah. you need this army this mindless this faceless army to mm-hmm. fight so it's, it's gonna happen i think inevitably here but i i just think it's gonna be awesome like there's i, I we're just gonna leave it at that it's gonna be absolutely <laughs> amazing go check out this teaser one of many but probably the best i've seen for a movie that is still a year and a half out that just began production yeah they so. they packed a lot in for just filming for like what two weeks? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing with Marvel; they can put almost no new content into yeah. something, and it feels like a completely brand new thing. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's all about construction of a proper teaser. Yeah, some people should learn about. It. <laughs> Anyways, Justice League released something similar. You may not remember it, but it was still there. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's spin this comic book talk, comic book movie talk, into our comic book picks of the week. Pick of the week. I'm going to jump off first here. I'm going to take first because I think this ties in very appropriately to what we just discussed. And like I said at the start, when we started doing these comic book picks of the week, they're not always going to be the most current comic books. Sometimes we're going to do throwback picks of the week. And I'm throwing it back to Infinity Gauntlet number one, one of the inspirational Ooh. stories behind Infinity War. At least that's what we think. We did see the cover of Infinity Gauntlet number one in that promo. And I went back and reread that. I have the trade sitting right here. I would highly recommend going and getting this before going and seeing Infinity War. We're going to probably discuss this quite heavily down the road in the future. But I just want to highlight here a few things in this in this trade, this specifically issue number one. There's a really great scenes with Doctor Strange and Silver Surfer. We have Silver Surfer arriving on Earth with this ominous message of impending doom. And it's so well written and so well drawn. I absolutely love it. This is where we see Thanos getting the gauntlet and snapping out of existence half of the known universe. Just beautifully done. We do see him pursuing death to almost no end here. To find the favor of her, he feels smited by her. It's just so well crafted in this one single issue. We even visit Spider-Man. We visit Captain America and seeing the disappearance of different heroes. It's one of my favorite stories by Jim Starling, one of my favorite Thanos stories. And it's so appropriate to go back, you guys, and revisit this prior to even seeing Guardians of the Galaxy. I think I think it's nice to have this background in Thanos, this relationship to some of the books that are inspiring him. And like I said, we're going to go through that in a whole lot of detail down the road. But I want to just recommend Infinity Gauntlet number one, or even the whole trade itself. Just go out, grab it, read it improve your understanding of Thanos <laughs> through reading the comic books because the Roosters are taking so much inspiration I believe at least I think from the comic books here they took a lot for Civil War there's going to be nods there's going to be hints there's going to be easter eggs to this book itself go out and grab that that's my comic book pick the week <laughs> a throwback Infinity Gauntlet number one damn that's yeah, a good choice yeah good luck trying to get the single issues because they probably just went up tenfold i've got all of them oh. okay nice i nice. bought them about four years ago <laughs> Jeez. i have to still find mine so my older brother used to collect comics back in the 90s and in my parents basement he had his long box and he took it to his house but he had the full run in there and i should have just stole it without him knowing but, uh... <laughs> if they don't do a poster of the cover of infinity gauntlet number one they are just missing it oh that's yeah. that should be the steel book yeah you yeah. gotta fire your market guy yeah. if they don't do that yeah, or uh, just a nod to it yeah an homage to it this takes place obviously after secret wars then yes yeah the secret so. wars was like the first big uh, at yeah. least a marvel uh big mega event yeah i think, right? so, yeah. I think yeah. yeah it was because um dc announced crisis on infinite earth and then marvel beat him to the punch with uh civil secret, war secret, secret wars, wars sorry, right yeah, yeah. which uh, was like in the 80s, the 80s i think it was 83 but don't quote me on that yeah we'll okay. just say 83 yeah it's in the 80s so no this one was fact come checks out, uh, on the 84 84 uh, <laughs> and then this came out in uh the 90s 92, 92. yeah so just before marvel started uh running into some turmoil pretty yeah much, eh? yeah yeah interesting so and this has follow-ups in uh, the Infinity Crusade and Infinity War. I can't remember the exact order of all of them. If this oh, is the okay. first one, I thought the first one was 91, but it doesn't matter. There's follow-ups <laughs> or preludes to this or whatever, but the whole Infinity series spans three different mini-events. Awesome stuff. All right, Sanjay, lay on us your comic book. All pick right. Of the week. Any guesses? What is it going to be? What? DC, DC. <laughs> I'm going to say Batman celebrating. Uh, yeah, actually, with my uh, Bane shirt on, uh, I went with... A classic. Well, not a classic. A modern classic, we'll call it. Nice. All-Star Batman number seven. Oh, I've yet to read it. I got it at Okay, home. okay. Nice. So Let I won't spoil it. too much, All but right. it was amazing. So this is a Poison Ivy story. Yeah. So you don't get a lot of them. Like, she's one of those, like, villains that's been around for a long time. She was in Batman and Robin. And I'm not going to spoil it, but there is one scene in this uh, comic that pays homage to the Batman and Robin movie. Does it have to, anything to do with the, the back card? <laughs> no. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you'll see it. When you, uh, when you read the panel, just let me know. Nice. Uh, written by the great, in my opinion, the best Batman writer of all time, Scott Snyder. And who's it drawn by? Uh, Tula Lote. 
Oh, is it not John Romero Jr. anymore? No, no. So he oh, left All Star in number Ooh. five. <laughs> oh, and man. Then, so he left at five. So he did the first arc of Two Face. Do you actually like his art? I love it. Yeah, it was I, good. I, I, I lo- did you? It worked. Yeah, for, yeah. yeah. I really like his DC stuff. Yeah. I can't speak too much for his Marvel stuff because I haven't read it. Okay. But he did a super. Tim loves it. Yeah, <laughs> he did a Superman run with Jeff Johns. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, that that was pretty cool. Did not, yeah. Like he did Cap stuff. Yeah, it was the yeah. Dimension Z stuff, which yeah. wasn't a good story, anyways. It, yeah. But yeah. I just did not like the art. Just, just a... like, couldn't get into it. <laughs> JR, JR. Yeah, he did, man. He did some stuff in uh, AVX as well. Yeah, it was okay. all right. He yeah, Spider Man for a bit too. It's, it's just okay. so yeah. noticeable as art, and I don't find that. And I'm not saying that in a particularly good way. Mm-hmm. Like it sticks out to me. But shouldn't like I I like that because then you know you get to like know the artist even if you don't particularly love it if it's your personal taste at least it's something different right yeah. like it's true I'll give yeah. you that I can pick him out probably better than most <laughs> that's true yeah I mean uh, there's so few artists that we can just like look at today in a today's day and age and be like oh that's a Perez or that's a John Romano Jr. Yeah. or that's a uh, I'm trying to think a Greg Capullo Greg is another Capullo is one awesome. yeah, yeah yeah there's so there's very few of them. Um, but I really like this art. Um, I apologize if I'm butchering um, their name, but Tula Lote. It was kind of like graffiti. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it's very cool, very different. Um, very cool story involving uh, Batman needing Poison Ivy's help. And then um, it continues from the last uh, issue, which uh, involved Mr. Freeze. Yeah. And then it, fall- it flows nicely into the next issue, which involves the Mad Hatter. So he's nice. going through Batman's Rogue Gallery, which uh, I think is the best of all time. It's it's, it's fun. I love Mr. Freeze. He's one of my favorite DC villains. So yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of which, did you hear the rumor quickly? Arnold Schwarzenegger possibly in Wonder Woman. For what? That's the rumor. Kane I don't Conan? know. <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Mister <laughs> Olympia. Yeah. So maybe he'll be Zeus. I don't know. But there's been some speculation, so don't be surprised. This is the sound of me smacking my head with my hand. <laughs> 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 All right. So we got one Marvel, one DC. Troy, break the tie. You're probably going to go image or something just to screw yeah. us up. <laughs> I'm always back and forth, but um, you know what? Today I'm going with um, Infamous Iron Man, number oh, four, ooh. but it's pretty much the whole series. This is, yeah. Have, have you been reading it? Yeah, it's so good. This is awesome. <laughs> um, the first issue or so is kind of whatever. I agree. And I'm, I'm really glad I chose to read this after Civil War II, or else I would have been spoiled hard there but um it really picks up around issue three um the art's grown on me it's uh alex maliv yeah yeah uh michael bendis is oh, is okay. uh, the him. writer Brian but michael bendis yeah, yeah <laughs> man. The, 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 the armor is so cool it's so doom but so iron man and and i think this is really cool because you have the bad guy at the helm of the hero he really wants to do good and if you've been reading iron man before invincible iron man you yeah. know that doom's kind of taking a turn i'm not going to spoil like the actual story but some really cool things going on here. It does a better job than the superior Iron Man run where Iron Man was kind of bad. Yeah. It's on par, I think, with uh, your boy Cap being like the bad guy slash good guy yeah. and superior Spider-Man. It's on board with those those two comics right now. So it's really cool. I can't wait to, uh, you know, read more of these issues. You get to see uh, Thing make an appearance. You got some mm-hmm. S.H.I.E.L.D. going on. It's nice yeah. to see Thing in there because he's got that relationship with Doom too. Yes, and Doom remembers. Yeah. Okay. Some things going back to uh, Secret Wars. Yeah. So, uh, man. So, what Iron Man is this? Is this Tony Stark or is this? No, uh... this is this is Doctor Doom's yeah. taking over. Okay. He's taking over as well one of the other Iron Man because we yeah. still have Riri, Riri Williams. Williams. Riri Williams. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so again, I know going back to the Old Man Logan that I had to pick of the week before, I, I really like stories that continue the plot from Secret Wars because I feel like Marvel's lacked in fulfilling that eight-month gap. So it's cool when they go back to a character like Doctor Doom who still does remember things from uh, Secret Wars. So yeah. Doctor nice. Doom was a big pivotal point in that whole Secret Wars 2015 oh. event too. Yes. You don't have to tell me I read it. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I picked up like five issues and then I was like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. It was a tough event to follow. Did, did, did the art work for you reading in, this uh, this comic? Yeah, Infamous? I like it actually. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a great comic book too. I fully agree with you. Yeah, solid stuff. Yeah. It's uh, it's another one of these issues. Like I, I don't know what's going on. Like I express so much doubt, but there's so many good comic books right now in that world that yeah. Good stuff <laughs> I, I mean, I know we talked about this last week. Uh, maybe quickly, Troy, we can get your opinion. Um, Marvel seems like they're having some issues with their comics, even though you guys seem to be loving what they're giving you week after week. Uh, are you in favor? Do you think they need a reboot, or do you think they should just status quo? Or what do you think? I, I don't think they need to reboot. 
Uh, but they definitely need to fix the status quo, I would say. I mean, even I'm a, I'm a big Spider-Man fanboy, obviously. But even right now, you know, we're getting this clone conspiracy thing going on, which is a little, a little ridiculous. It'd kind of be cool to put some characters back to where they should be. Especially for readers where, for instance, if you kill off the Hulk and you have a new Hulk or a She-Hulk and people invest in those characters thinking they're going to get like, you know, 50 issues, but you only yeah. get six. Yeah. And then now they're turning back to the original Hulk if that's going to happen. But I just think it's unfair. I think it's it's easier for people to jump into a character that they already know but at the same time they're pulling off sam wilson which mm-hmm. is a great as cap right and then they're pulling off <laughs> yeah. um x-23 as wolverine who, who's cool and miles morales is killing it as spider-man yeah. so yeah. It, it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a balancing act between, yeah like we said last week between yeah. the new and the old and mm-hmm. finding the best characterization of the individual characters and then just pouring that into good comic books and good writers and good art and all that and just going forward with that yeah and, and putting them back in the roots like uh, rebirth you know, yeah, you yeah. got characters that are right back at home uh, pre New Fifty Two, and I think Marvel could uh, could learn a lesson from yeah. those guys over at DC a bit. Definitely, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And because the last couple of weeks we've been fairly light <laughs> on Star Wars news, there hasn't been a lot going on in the Star Wars world since the announcement of the Last Jedi. We got Celebration coming down the pipe here, and Rebels is returning this week, so yes. we're really excited for that. Picking up on that Sabine story, we did have the last five episode titles and synopsis leaked. And we're going to pick that discussion up on our weekly after show this coming Monday. So tune back in for a little bit more discussion on the newest Rebels episode, as well as these new titles that reveal when we can expect Obi-Wan and Maul to fight it out. And what potential we could see happening with Ezra and Kanan going down the road towards the end of this just unreal season three. So tune back in on Monday. We're going to cover a little bit of that. But one thing coming out of the comic book world, they had the announcement of the Screaming Citadel number one, this new crossover event that we're going to see with the two ongoing books right now, Star Wars and Dr. Aphra. So it's going to be a team up of Luke Skywalker and Dr. Aphra. And I'm not going to go too much into the details here, but it looks like it's going to be quite a bit of fun. I'm going to cross over of two characters, one that is brand new from the comic book universe and one of our oldest established characters. So yes. I'm really looking forward to this. We're going to have this Screaming Citadel number one. It drops in May, I believe, and it's going to be continued on in both of the ongoings for two issues similar to the Vader Down series. Nice. So it's nice. not going to be too much as far as buying a ton of comic books and having all the tie-ins, but I think it's going to be another great event similar to this Vader Down series. So I'm looking forward to crossing over here. i got a lot of catching up to do. I've yet to start reading this Yoda story, which yeah. is four or five issues long. Yeah, I'm, I'm all caught up with that one, 27 and 28. Yeah. Yeah. And so it looks like this will start in Star Wars issue number 31. Cool. cool. So a little bit ways down the road, but I just want to throw that out there, and that's something that we'll be keeping a close eye on here. I just started reading the Doctor Aphra series. Great series. Is it good? Yeah. See, I haven't been keeping up with yeah. that one. I really liked her before when she crossed over with Star Wars and with Vader. Yeah. So that will be cool to continue. I'm calling it right now. Doctor Aphra is Ray's mom. Okay. Joking. I'm, no, I'm completely joking. <laughs> if you couldn't tell. No. Anyways. I couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> uh, I, have, I have some Star Wars news. Oh. Legit. Shoot. So the legend, the GOAT composer, John Williams. Yes. Turned 85 the other day, and he saw some pictures of him composing Star Wars Episode Eight. Yeah, I did see that. Started. Yeah. So, you know, just uh, just quickly, John Williams, um, what is your favorite John Williams score? Because oh. his man did... Jaws, E.T., Raiders of the Lost Ark, or like he did Indiana Jones, Star Wars. Um, he did Superman the movie. He did Saving Private Ryan. The guy's done pretty much everything. everything. Back to the Future, I think. I think so, too, I think yeah. Back to the Future. I don't know what direction you're going here, but I have to say Star Wars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, for me, it's Star Wars, and it's between either Imperial March or Duel of Fates. I, Duel of Fates is, I can play some Star Wars video games and just Put on mute and play dual face in the background, <laughs> and I'm just I'm in that world. Yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm my lightsaber skills. I'm, I'm by the and I'm going nuts. Oh, but Imperial awesome. March is just yeah. Like, that's that's the song. That's the song you want when you walk down a hallway. You want everyone to you <laughs> know look at you the way they look at Vader. That right? should so. be your uh, music when you walk down the aisle when you get married. Yeah, then everybody would leave. <laughs> <laughs> so you laugh. Okay. You laugh right now. But yeah. When my wife and I walked into our reception, we came into the main Star Wars title theme. Oh, that's oh, wicked. That's awesome. Boom. I was carrying her in my arms and just, yeah. That's just, so oh, cool. Just, just that whole opening <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That's so just cool. And we walked out to that, yeah. Nice. Did you get a medal? And yeah. Everyone yeah. got a medal except for Chewie. Yeah, <laughs> a big, tall, hairy buddy didn't get one. Yeah. <laughs> You hear that, Harry? You didn't get a medal. (laughs) 
Anyways, guys, let's jump into our main topic of discussion today. Yeah, Lego Batman. Yes. So, Does Batman pay his taxes? No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> this movie had a great opening weekend. Well below, though, yeah. my initial prediction of $100 million. So That was a bit of a wild-ass prediction. I, I think the competition retrospect. played a big part in that. Yeah, though. John Wick. John Wick and uh, Fifty, Shades. Fifty Shades Darker yeah. combined $75 million for movies two and three, which is very rare. Yeah. And Split's still doing a hell of a job. Yeah. Yeah. Especially this time of year, too. So this pulled in $55-plus million dollars. Not bad, not bad. Change, but that's that's pretty good yeah. for yeah. this type of family movie, especially in February here. And like you're saying, I didn't realize the competition until I looked at the box office on Saturday. Yeah. I, I think we're going to have to readjust our expectations for 2017 because oh, yeah. it's not a common year. And I think Lego Batman is already showing that because we were predicting 80 to 100 million. And 55 million, you know, it's not bad. It's only an $80 million budget. So it's for sure going to make a ton of money in merchandising alone and at the box office. But I think, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to get billion dollars in 2017. So this movie has played pretty well to the general audience. This has found a lot of favor with the comic book fans, with fans of Lego, with children, with families, with all ages here. And it's even got a fairly decent score on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't always use this as a gauge, (laughs) but they did have a very interesting summary of all the Batman films on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, okay. And I've got them here, and I'm just going to quickly run through them, (laughs) and we'll see where the Lego Batman Okay, okay. amongst some of the best Batman films. All right, lay it on me, Tim. Let's go. I'm a glutton for punishment. Batman and Robin, 11%. What? Okay, that, that should be higher. That's a fun movie. Batman vs. Superman, 27%. You know how I feel. That should be much higher. <laughs> Batman Forever, 40 I think that should be lower. I love that one. Really? Yeah. That's that's my least favorite Batman film. Chris O'Donnell, man, is wrong. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it has its moments. Yeah. Ooh, Batman 89, <laughs> 72%. Okay. It's a great film. Batman 66, 80%. I think that's a little generous. Like the dance? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> Batman Begins, 84%. Dark really? Knight Rises, that's it? 87%. Oh, so that's, that's too it. high. And then we have the Lego Batman movie sliding in at 91% certified oh, fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. That's good. And that is followed by the Dark Knight at 94%. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Replaced, of course. For was sure. Returns on there? Sorry, did you mention Returns? Oh, yeah, yeah Batman Returns. Did I miss that? Returns was 80%. Oh, okay, okay. Awesome. That was great. Best Catwoman we've ever seen on the big screen. For sure. Yeah. Michelle the Pfeiffer. The amongst the best of that Burton Schumacher. For sure. Era. A little weird, a little dark. In the second game, third game, <laughs> like as an adult. It's yeah. really cool when I was a kid, but it, it goes in weird places. <laughs> but anyways, we're not here to discuss Burton. Not yet. Schumacher Universe. We'll get to that eventually down the line. We're here to discuss a little bit more of this Lego Batman movie. So That's right. It's, it's got the critical reception. It's got the fan reception. Let's hear about your initial <laughs> viewing experiences here, guys. We're going to start with you, Sanjay. Okay. I loved it. I thought it was a great film. Plot was a little thin, but when you're having that much fun... Um, and that much cameos and that much Easter eggs. Like, this is a film for kids. Um, it was made for kids that adults also enjoy. And I think we got to readjust our expectations for this film as composed or as compared to Batman v Superman or any other um, live action Batman films. You know, if you did this exact same movie live action, I guarantee it would not be at 91% of Ron Tomatoes. <laughs> Can't tell this live no, <laughs> it's just way too wacky, way too out there. But the kids in my theater, um, they really seem to really love it. I've had, ki- I saw kids clapping when Batman wins. I saw kids near tears when it looked like he wasn't going to win. Uh, they were fully emotionally invested. And I can just imagine the merchandise that's going to fly off the shelf for this film. All the sets, like the um, clown car that the Joker is with the balloons that takes him up and the Batmobile. And, and I mean, you could buy an action Lego figure of Calendar Man. It's just crazy. Egghead. <laughs> Egghead. Condiment King. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? Okay, is that a real villain? Condiment yeah. King? Yeah, oh, yeah. Condiment yeah. King. Yeah. <laughs> What? Yeah, all those characters they mentioned. <laughs> they must yeah. have been like from the 60s or 70s when Batman was like way out there. Yeah. I know Egghead was because when they went through the whole roster, yeah. I was like, oh yeah. my God, if they drop Egghead, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> and they got there. And yeah. I was like, wow. Oh, yeah. And then Who egged the bat signal? Yeah. <laughs> King Tut, too. King Tut. Yeah, he's in the uh, animated series, yeah, I think. He's, he's also in 66 as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This was like a love letter to Batman. A very from... cynical love letter. <laughs> <laughs> it was saying like, it was like, um, 
you know, it showed everything from Batman. I was reading or I was listening to an interview with the director. Uh, he also did a bunch of uh, Robot Chicken episodes. And that you could makes probably. A lot of yeah. Sense. yeah. Um, and he said they went back to issue one or Detective Comics 27. And then they went all the way forward and they tried to get in as much Easter eggs and as much, um, you know, cameos as they possibly could. And, they, you know, this is going to be a great film to get on Steelbook and just like pause frame by frame to see everything you can see in the background. I think that's one of the things that I struggled a bit with was because there's so many cameos <laughs> and so many jokes. Like I really did enjoy that and I found myself laughing at a lot of them. Yeah. But there's so much stuff in that sometimes I felt it was layered so heavily that I wasn't done laughing at one joke when another <laughs> joke dropped. And I'm thinking, I just missed that. And I'm trying to think of what, like, what happens, how I'm trying to reframe and recontextualize the joke. And yeah. so I found myself lost a bit. Yeah. I found yeah. that even with the detail in the background, like coming down to the CGI, there's so much detail there that I found myself almost overwhelmed on the screen. <laughs> like, I'm trying to take in so much. Yeah. I think overstimulation is a great way to put it. And I think, like you said, it's going to really benefit from sitting and watching it again and again on TV, on Netflix or whatever, just to appreciate the amount of detail that they've actually put into this film. Yeah. So. Yeah. Troy, what did you think? We saw it on IMAX last night. Yeah, time. yeah. Actually, going back to what you just said, I, I, I was prepared for that a little bit because the Lego Movie did the same thing to me. There's Absolutely. so many layered jokes. I was like, whoa. So <laughs> I was trying to like buckle down and really pay attention to as much as I could. But you know, there's so many things that uh, went right over my head. Um, Tim, because you're such a Lego guy, you must have noticed like all the detail. Like when the flames are going, you can see the little like flames. So, like, yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty cool. I think the movie started off really strong. Like I was dying. I, I think all three of us were yeah. dying at the beginning. It was yeah, it was crazy. Um, the effects were great. The voice acting was pretty cool. I, I'm a big Robin guy. I think Grayson guy. He's, he's my favorite. But I, I didn't yeah. like how they handled uh, Robin in the movie necessarily. Uh, Zach Galgenafkis as uh, Joker didn't really do it for me either. I, it's kind of hit or miss with me. Again, at the beginning, he was great. Towards yeah. the end, I was like, oh, I don't know if this Joker <laughs> works for me. Yeah. Uh, the cameos were great. All the callbacks to all the old school Batman stuff it was hilarious. It was it was good. But like Sanjay said here, uh, the plot was a little little thin for me. I, I think even the Lego movie did a better job with their, with their plot. But man, yeah, there was some cool stuff. The Batcave scenes were just incredible. And we, you know, we even get to see um, Jerry Maguire in the, in the yeah. movie, which is just <laughs> crazy, crazy. So I got to ask you, because you're the big Robin guy. Yeah. How hard did you fangirl when he wore the Nightwing suit? And when they mentioned Bloodhaven. That was awesome. Yeah. That, that was great. And I really like the joke they pulled where he's trying to get uh, adopted by Batman. <laughs> and explain his name. You know, I'm Richard Grayson. Oh, my yeah. My friends call me Dick. You know? And <laughs> he's like, so many. kids great. So Oh, cruel. man. I thought that yeah. was just hilarious. Um, yeah. You know, Will Arnett just, just kills it as Batman. He did so a great good. job. Yeah. yeah. Right from the rapping through to the, the brooding Batman. Yeah. And to yeah. His, the later Family Man Batman. Yeah. yeah. He did great. And he just really captured that. And one thing that was cool here, I didn't quite realize and quite catch on to this but it's i think it's set in the same universe as the lego movie like i think this is a all-spanning franchise yeah i think so yeah, yeah. and one cool thing too is that i almost felt like it was at first is really attached to the tim burton verse i really felt like oh yeah. shoot is this the same batman almost yeah. because they're yeah. pulling from a lot of things especially like the comics he makes to Joker and yep. the costume itself, you the know, Prince reference. The yeah, Prince reference, which, oh, Billy D. Williams oh, was Two Phase. They right? corrected so, that wrong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I thought that was so funny, but then obviously it goes a little back and it shows like the BVS and it shows yeah. the Adam West and all that stuff. They in didn't there. spend too much time parroting the more recent stuff. They did some nodding towards and some parroting of the Dark Knight, in particular Bane's voice, yeah. and the brooding <laughs> scenes and that. But they spent a lot of time, like you said, focusing in on particularly the Burton verse. Yeah. yeah. And then throwbacks to the old 66 Batman as well. Yeah. And I know Tim and I chuckled a lot when they kind of called out Suicide Squad, yeah. where um, so Killer good. Croc pressed yeah. the button. He's like, I did something. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, whoa. They yeah. really went there. And was <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Yeah. 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 I liked it. It was the equal opportunist film. It seemed like it poked fun at everything. Yes. And Iron everyone. Man. Iron yeah. Man sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah. Um, getting back to the plot here a little bit. I agree with you guys. The start was the strongest part of the movie i felt this engaged me fully i love the references even though they were so rapid and this i think was the best joker this was the best batman and this is the only part i really have the issue is i did feel it low i felt myself checking my watch about halfway through thinking to myself man are they gonna get to the final action sequence here? <laughs> yeah. i need yeah. a little bit more something and this whole plot device of him 
focusing on how he's lonely, how he has no family and refusing to work with anyone. Do you think they played too much into that? Because I felt personally, I was like, okay, I get it. You're lonely. I get it. You don't <laughs> yeah. have a family. I get it. You're yearning for something more, but you won't let that come in because you have these demons when it comes to your parents being killed. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a lot. And that, that kind of pulled the movie down a bit for me. Okay, yeah. You know, I think they kind of did a good job. Like, I, I thought um, they did a good job because they kind of, like, layered it with other stuff. So, like, they would just have one scene where Batman's like, oh, I can't have, like, a family, you know? And then, like, okay, well, I got to go get the Phantom Zone projector from Superman. And then I was, like, so busy, like, distracted because, like, oh, my God, the Justice League's in it. And they have the right. Wonder Twins and they have the Flash and Aquaman. And Another it was so scene. cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then when he goes up to the uh, Fortress of Solitude and he presses the doorbell and it's a John Williams Superman, the movie yes. score, I cried. Uh, I'm going to man up and say I cried. <laughs> um, I dug it because I kind of think like they kind of layered it where it was just like nodding at it here and then 10 jokes. And then they'll nod at it here and then another cameo and 500 Easter eggs. Yeah. So I think, you know, they did a good job kind of not harping on it too much, but they definitely did bring it up quite often yeah um that was definitely like the crux because that's kind of the crux of batman yeah, it's yeah. the main plot point and they're really trying to focus in on that and i and i get it but it was just it seemed like a little much sometimes. yeah they beat us over the head a little bit yeah I felt with it and you're talking about superman here and they, they really <laughs> quite heavily focus in on the donner universe the donner version of yeah. Superman, right down to the fortress of solitude the appearance and the likeness of zod yes. and then jor so as well cool. all from that donner universe and the inclusion of Justice League. I thought there was going to be more inclusion of Justice <laughs> yeah. League, but I yeah. loved what they did there. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. They're having, what, the 78th anniversary, which is yeah. a nice nod to DC and its 78th anniversary and all that. Yeah. It was really cool to see all those characters. I didn't know who all of them were. <laughs> uh, specifically, you said the Wonder Twins. That's uh, and Super Friends from, yeah. like, the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's the dog? Crypto. Yeah, Crypto. Yeah. The Wonder Dog. dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man I, I think he was in Smallville, wasn't he? I think so. I can't remember. I think so, yeah. yeah. Cyborg, there's a bunch of uh, yeah. kind of Green Lantern. Yeah, so I heard yeah. um, that the sequel for this will be a Lego Justice League movie. That would make sense. They did that with a video game, too, so that would make a lot of sense. That'd if, be uh, cool, yeah. If they did that. That yeah. seems to be what is the next logical step in this, because we did see that Ninjenjo or Ninjo or whatever it is. Yeah, what do you guys think of that yeah. preview? It, it's look fine like i know like it, it kind of again it's stepping a bit further outside of what i know in lego like i've never collected that never really looked at that so yeah it's probably gonna have a similar type presentation in as far as the comedy and all that and i can appreciate that and it was funny it was getting laughs out of yeah. me at yeah the, at the intro there but yeah. i didn't even know that was coming it was no. kind of just a, yeah, yeah. i heard about it a little while ago but kind of forgot about it but i think with lego it'd be cool to see uh the pirates or like the robin hood yeah yeah okay so I think yeah. it'd be cool to see a pirate lego or a lego robin hood yeah yeah. Cool. yeah what did you think of joker and his ultimate plan here to kind of <laughs> trick batman into sending him into the phantom zone <laughs> i liked it i liked it especially you, you see the gears going in joker when batman breaks off that relationship that, that oh, was so epic how they played that was so well <laughs> it done it was crazy and, yeah. and the crowd just went silent like i wanted to laugh i'm like oh maybe it's not cool if i laugh at that <laughs> point because you know it's hitting hard right now yeah <laughs> i didn't know if they're going to commit to this because i expected fully at that one point where they're kind of almost holding hands and yeah. he's kind of welling up i was like he's gonna turn around and laugh and shoot him or something yeah and then they fully commit to this whole relationship and oh, relationship yeah. thing and you know, I'm I'm seeing other people, or I'm, I'm yeah. beating up other people. Yeah. yeah, and I love the reference to Superman becoming maybe it's Superman, maybe it's Bane. Bane. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was great. Yeah, that was amazing. Superman, he's not even a villain. Yeah. That's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I thought the relationship there was really well done and how they worked that into the overall plot of the movie. I like that aspect of it. And of course, Joker needs to be this villain for Batman, his yeah. ultimate bad guy, his arch nemesis. Like you need that. And I thought it was really well executed in the movie. That was one of the strong points for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I loved it. Um, and I loved um, how he took the villains from all around the universe. See, did you? Yeah. I didn't like I that. love that because yeah. as a kid growing up, that's how you play action figures. You don't just True. separate your Marvels and your Star Wars and your DC. You just combine them all. And that's what it felt like. It felt like you were a kid again and you were playing with your Legos <laughs> and you didn't even care that... Batman was fighting Sauron from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, see, me, I liked it when they made the little nod where the Phantom Zone took took in the monsters, yeah. and you yeah. heard like Voldemort in the background. I was like, oh shoot, that's <laughs> awesome. That's all I needed. And then when they showed up, I was like, oh, I don't know if those villains need to show up. 
I, I, it's interesting you put it in that way because I didn't yeah. really think about that, that kind of kid bashing your action figures and your dinosaurs yeah. and all that and mm-hmm. making them fight each other. But I think I have to agree with you there, Troy, that I like the nodding to the yeah. fact that you have this wider universe and the phantasm does contain this mm-hmm. ultimate villains. And right. it kind of reminded me of, uh, I think it's Villains Pub. Um, oh, yeah, from, from YouTube. Yeah. Uh, how It Should have Ended. How It Should have Ended. That's, yeah. It's oh, right, right. so good. And that yeah. really yeah. reminded me of that. And I was like, oh, maybe they're nodding towards that. <laughs> yeah. But I think what I would appreciate it a bit more from that whole Phantom Zone scene is, is seeing those, making those nice references and nods, but almost transporting the opening sequence into the end sequence where Batman and you're seeing all these nods to Egghead and all this. And the opening sequence was maybe just the Joker and a few other of the rogues gallery. Oh, okay. But having the rogues gallery be that main fight right. at the end. Yeah. I, and I know you're looking for this like massive impending doom. We have King Kong and, <laughs> and the villains from Star Trek and the villains from um, the robots, the British robots. Can't remember it's from. Doctor Who. Doctor Who, thank you. Oh, okay, you yeah. just lost yeah. a whole bunch of British viewers to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the British are going to kill me. <laughs> um, They're British robots. Ask your nerd friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I would have liked it to stay within the DC universe a bit more. It's not to say that I didn't like what they did, but I felt myself so engaged with that first part, that first scene with all the Rose Gallery and trying to yeah. pick out the 66 villains and the animated villains and Mr. Yeah. Freeze and all that. I think they need to spend a bit more time with that Rogues Gallery. I think I would have liked that a bit more. Yeah. How about the music? Music hit anybody like the Lego movie or, or what? Well, that, like think? that fine, his like rap and all the... the yeah, the, yeah, the metal and all that. Yeah. What did you guys think about that uh, Robin's theme song all that stuff? Yeah. <laughs> I liked it, but there was no uh, Everything's Awesome. I was yeah. waiting for like that one like earworm song that would just stick in my head all yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I, I did like like the uh, Batman rap and the uh, like the na 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. throwback. So. Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, the Lego movie... Like the first one had better music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think? I, I didn't really like it that much. They they had something going in the first scene. They they had like this this best friend kind of trend going on. I thought it was hilarious. They kept mentioning this best friend thing. I was like, oh, this is really funny. And they went away from it. I thought that was going to be their new Everything's Awesome. But yeah. I guess is I just heard something else. <laughs> yeah, the, mu- the music didn't really do it for me, though. Yeah. And Barbara Gordon. Uh, there was a different, slightly different take than I'm used to for Barbara yeah. Gordon. Her yeah. taking up the commissionership. And you see Batman kind of ogling over her and yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I like the relationship there and i like that she played this like really empowered female yeah what, what do you think of the take on barbara gordon that eventually turns into bat girl bat woman <laughs> how'd you like it if i called you bat boy yeah. yeah that was good that was good there is a bat woman uh her yeah. number one issue comes out on wednesday yeah, Sandra so. king yeah. yeah so check that out um i liked it i thought it was good um I'm just going to point out something that uh, writer Gail Simone said, you know, and uh, she's a great female comic book writer and she writes great female comic book characters and great male comic book characters. But she said, you know, she wasn't too thrilled with this um, trend of not having funny female characters. And I, I didn't even think of that. And I was like, yeah, she's right. Like Barbara Gordon was pretty straight lace. Like she didn't really crack a lot of jokes compared to like Batman or Robin and I didn't really think of that until I saw that tweet. So, um, but I did like uh, I did like her character. Um, but you know, maybe some more humor next time for the female characters because yeah. yeah. and Harley Quinn was yeah, even Harley toned Quinn. down, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think they really limited Batman's rogue gallery. I think that's like coming back to that yeah. point again that they could have expanded a bit more and used those characters that are a bit more familiar. I know we just had her in Suicide Squad, and but I think leveraging off of the characters that the fans were a bit more receptive to yeah. maybe it would have been like, I just was lacking a bit more of that Rose gallery. Cause I really, really like that. It's, it's yeah. one of the best yeah. right? Yeah. and to utilize Catwoman yeah. or, or racer and... yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So I, I, I think the director is more a fan of the silver age or the eighties Batman. And I think it showed like some of the modern characters, like, like Harley Quinn wasn't in it very much. Right. Bane was in it quite a bit, actually. So I was more nodding to I think the Dark Knight. Universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That, that voice. Yeah, um, yeah. Barbara Gordon again. I guess I mean once they they took liberties with Robin, I guess I threw everything else out the window. <laughs> they, they really changed Barbara Gordon a lot. I'm more of a fan of Barbara Gordon being like on the Dick Grayson level, where they have a relationship as opposed to like Batman going crazy over uh board in there so <laughs> yeah that is yeah. kind of weird to see um they did that in the killing joke the animated movie yeah which was, got some backlash yeah but i think yeah. this was more like comedic and uh more uh um, lighthearted yeah it's yeah. more lighthearted film like she's not getting shot and paralyzed in this film at least yeah. you hope not <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> but some ways they could have taken liberties and had Catwoman in that role that Batman's going yeah. crazy over for like the Selena Kyle. Yeah. Right? All right, guys, before we wrap it up here, why don't we each lay down our favorite Easter egg and then our give our final verdict on this. Do we recommend the Lego Batman movie? We'll throw it to Sanjay first. Okay. Ooh, tough. Um, so many Easter eggs. It's hard to pick just one, so I'm not going to pick just one. <laughs> I'll go to uh, the Batmobile Gallery, which shows pretty much every Batmobile he's ever had. And the Batman Beyond suit. Oh, you took my... Yeah, yeah, the, the Terry McGinnis. That was this, I saw that suit. Yeah, I, oh, I thought of you when that, sh- that came up. Yeah. I was like, that's for Troy, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's tough. Well, I, I um, yeah, I guess my favorite... Um, I don't know, man. That's, that's pretty tough now. You know, it might be Egghead. I think yeah? Egghead's cool because Egghead gets like zero shine. Like yeah. Zero. So like I said, I, I was waiting for him to drop his name. And when they did, I was like... All right, nailed it. You know, yeah. even uh, Crazy Quilt got his moment in the sun in Scott Snyder's run. Yeah, yeah that's brought right. him that, in there. That, um, was... Was the, I read the Calendar Man one. Oh, oh yeah, Calendar, Calendar Man's Man. Long yeah. Halloween, yeah. where he's like the serial killer, and he mm-hmm. like knows who's killing people on specific holidays. Right. But then with the rebirth number one, Calendar yeah. Man also shows. I kind of like them. That. Yeah. yeah. Like shedding his skin and all that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm going to say for me, it's, it's kind of an overarching one, but I liked all the nods to the Batman Rose Gallery. Yeah. And specifically the, and maybe not so much the Rose Gallery, but I howled at that Killer Croc scene. Yeah. yeah. That was incredible. Or so. how about when they're like, why don't we get the villains to help us beat the villains? Yeah. That was like, that's stupid. <laughs> 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 and Billy D. Williams, you can never go wrong. Yeah. With they finally read it that wrong because he would have made a much more interesting Two Face than Tommy Lee Jones. Yes. Mm, maybe yeah. less crazy. Yeah. So uh, anyone could have been less crazy than that. <laughs> All right, guys, to, to round it out here to finish this review off, do you guys recommend the Lego Batman movie? Absolutely. See it in theaters, buy the steel book, buy the merchandise for your kids because they're going to be asking for it anyway. So, yes. Yeah, I recommend it for sure. I mean, if you're a fan of the Lego movie and you're a fan of Batman, you can't go wrong with this movie. So go out there and check it out. I'm also a definite recommend here. I love the comedy here. The animation is great. The story, again, it's a little light plot-wise, but it does get you there towards the end. It's an engaging movie. They could have shaved maybe a minute or two off here yeah. and there. But all in all, great movie. Lots of fun. I would particularly say run out and see this in theaters. You could probably do with a rent on Apple or a Netflix. But if you're really interested and if your kids are excited about <laughs> Lego, like Lego, like Batman, they're going to love this. There's nothing in here that's going to scare them or anything like that. So, yeah, go check this out. It's a lot of fun. But I wouldn't say rush out and see it in IMAX. I would say rush out, see it in IMAX, see it in 3D. It's, uh, would, you, would you say, would you put this on par? So if you had the Lego movie and the Lego Batman movie, which one do you prefer? Lego movie for sure. I Lego, think Lego movie, movie is yeah. incredible. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go Lego Batman just because of the more the nods to the DC universe. Of course, yeah. Yeah. But I feel like the Lego movie was a better movie overall. But I would love if Marvel or Star Wars did something like this. I know. I don't think but... they will because Warner Brothers owns Lego. Yeah, but Star Wars characters showed up in the Lego movie. That's Remember, right. We yeah. saw them the show for two seconds. Falcon, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the Marvel maybe not, but I would love for them to do something similar where you're nodding to the universe and nodding to the comic books and the missteps <laughs> yeah. and the things that they did well, like. I, I would absolutely love that as a big Marvel fan, For as sure. a big Star Wars fan. Like, I know they do have these on the Cartoon Network or whatever. And yeah. They do yeah. parody a lot of things. They mm-hmm. point out a lot of the, the plot holes and the gaps here and there. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of fun. I really enjoy that almost cynicism to a degree mm-hmm. and kind of parodying what they've done in the past. Like, that's the best parts of this movie. Yeah. And I think that's where it really shines. Well, you may be in luck, Tim, because the brilliant writers and producers behind such hits as Disaster Movie epic movie and superhero movie are making a spoof on star wars Ugh. <laughs> but, well, on a better note though lord and miller are doing um the spider-man movie animated so oh, really that that yeah the miles morales one so wow. that when, could be pretty funny when does that come out uh next year nice yeah, next year yeah that just got miles me more Mark excited year. for it right awesome yeah. so. cool all in all guys that looks like a full recommend for the lego batman movie from here in the nerd room I'm excited to do our next movie review, which is going to be Logan. That Ooh. comes out in less than a month's time. Wow. Can yep. you believe it? Here we are. Hugh Jackman started this journey in 2000, and he ends it in less than a month. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We'll so go out there and check out that Old Man Logan book. Yeah. So I got gonna, you. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to be reviewing that the week prior and discussing some theories and speculating a bit and trying to tie in the larger comic book universe and trying to speculate and predict what comic books they use as inspiration for the logan film similar to how we've done other x-men and marvel universe movies we're also going to be talking about the oscars they're coming up 
I am slowly making my way through. I know Troy is plowing his way through watching the Oscar Best Picture movies. Yes. And we're going to be doing our predictions and laying down our bets here in a couple weeks as well. Nice. That might even be next week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. Anyways, <laughs> that is coming down the pipe very soon here. So we've got a pretty busy month. We're going to be returning with Star Wars Rebels Alert, our weekly podcast after show. Rebels comes back Sunday. Yes. That show drops on Monday. So look out for that coming down the pipe as well. And on February 28th, we will be dropping our second issue of our Marvel MCU retrospective series where we'll be discussing Incredible Hulk. So make sure to tune back in on the feeder list too right now for that at the end of February. Sweet. Yeah, lots in store. And then, you know, we got to give it up to the Star Wars Commonwealth podcast Definitely. because those guys are killing it over there too. So lots and lots of content coming your way. Yeah, and watch out for the Star Wars Podcast Awards. They should be dropping the finalist for nominations. So we'll be going back into another round of voting, hopefully Ooh. here for at a minimum, the Star Wars Commonwealth for Best Podcast Network. That voting did close last Thursday. And we thank you guys who went out and supported the Commonwealth and supported us as well in voting for the Star Wars Podcast Awards. We have a lot more Star Wars content coming down in the next few weeks here. We've got a busy month in February. But as we move into March, and that will be picking up again with the impending Thrawn book coming down, as well as Empire's End dropping here in a week or less. Oh, yeah. Is, is it running late? Was it meant to be February? I thought it it's always meant to be February. Oh, okay, my I bad. I think, maybe. I may have said okay. January at one point in the podcast, okay. not being right. And then we have Bayes and Shurit on May 2nd. We've got the Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo coming up. Celebration. There's a lot happening in the nerd world crunching here for the next couple of months. So make sure you keep it locked here on the Nerd Room for all your nerd news. You can always grab us at hashtag enter the nerd room on Twitter. Our handles are at the end of the episode. You can email us with your questions, comments, speculation. What did you think of the Lego Batman movie? Let us know. Email us at thenerdrm at gmail.com or hit us up on our Facebook or YouTube pages. Just search the Nerd Room Podcast. All right, guys. Until <laughs> next week for the Nerd Room, I'm Tim. I'm Troy. And I'm Sanjay. <laughs> and thank you for entering the Nerd Room. This has been a Nerd Room Podcast production. You can find our hosts, Tim and Troy, on Twitter at TheNerdRM and Troy the Boy 87 Don't forget to subscribe to The Nerd Room on iTunes, Facebook, and YouTube. Just search The Nerd Room Podcast. Be sure to head over to StarWarsCommonwealth.com to find other podcasts on the Star Wars Commonwealth Podcast Network, including Talk Star Wars, Generation X-Wing, Tumbling Saber, Rogue Squadron Podcast, and the Skyhopper Podcast. Follow the Star Wars Commonwealth on Twitter at SW Commonwealth and take your first steps into a larger world.